Okay. Well, let's go to Greenville where James is on the line. Hi, James. How are you today? I'm doing good. How are you? Great. What's up? Well, I had a question about my dog, Chewy. He's two years old, and he was diagnosed with Addison's disease. Mm -hmm. um, now, he's on two different kinds of uh, antibiotics. He's taking pregnizone and I can't pronounce the other one. It's uh, Fludrocortisone. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, it makes him, it seems to make him a little bit more aggressive, a little hyper. He eats a lot of food and puts oh, yeah. on no weight. Yeah. Um, my question is, is there, are there alternatives to this medication? What are the long-term effects of a dog? Is there anything else we can do that can help him? Yeah, okay. yeah absolutely. Good questions. Good questions. And, and, yep. and yeah, Addison's is a... Addison's is a you know a, a kind of real, a fascinating disease. It and, is. It's a real medical issue. Yeah. yeah, and it is. And there's more and more now because it's you know that we see because it's looked for now mm -hmm. um, more so. And now one thing that you said you know that we're on two antibiotics. We're not really those aren't antibiotics. Right. Um, they're you know technically they're steroids um, mm -hmm. as far as that goes. Um, the prednisone is a glucocorticoid, um, and the other is what's called a mineralocorticoid and and so what happens is a, the mineralocorticoid helps regulate our electrolyte balances and things like that and then the glucocorticoid is there uh it's replacing the cortisol and so what it's there for is to kind of help you know we need a basal level as far as stabilizing mm -hmm. cell membranes and things like that and to to uh help with stress and stuff like that mm -hmm. um and for people who don't know addison's is hypoadrenocorticism which means the adrenal glands not producing things it's supposed to and any time we have a hypo condition, as far as that goes, and especially like that, um, really as far as prognosis, our prognosis should be very good. Mm -hmm. um, that we should be, because all we need to do is we need to supplement or, or replace what that gland's not producing. Right. There's some dogs that that may be um, both, the you know, that you may have to do the prednisone and the mineralocorticoid. There may be some that you just do one or the other. Um, most often you do have to do the mineralocorticoid right. Right. for the... You know, for the fludrocortisone, that's a, you know, you can either do it that way as far as orally, or there's also an injectable product that, that you end up giving about every 26 days or so. Well, it varies from 24 to 28 days or so. Um, it's a, you know, as far as a sort of a repository injection that lasts for that long. And as far as the prednisone goes, we really, you know, if mm -hmm. we've got those signs that you're seeing, that we're, that we're just hungry all the time, we've got mm -hmm. an increased appetite, we've got right. increased water consumption, we got increased urination uh, for agitated or, or mm -hmm. you know, and, and sometimes panning too. What that what that mm -hmm. means is that we probably are giving too much. Right. What we want, we don't want to give enough prednisone to stop an allergy or anything else. We want to give enough just to what's called a basal metabolic rate mm -hmm. as far as just what the body normally would have with cortisol there. Right. And the only time you would go above that would be if that dog has, like we were talking earlier about stress-induced you know, mm -hmm. episodes that you know, if that dog gets really upset when company comes or really upset with certain things, then around the time frame of that, you may <laughs> increase the dose of that prednisone just a little bit to compensate because that's what the body would do is that if we got stressed, it would produce more cortisol. And so, you know, realistically, if we have a need to supplement that, that prednisone to replace the cortisol, we really, you shouldn't see any side effects from that because we should be doing it at such a low level that you don't have the side effects of the prednisone. I see. So um, are, when you say around the time, do you mean within hours or do you mean you within mean as, a day? You mean like as far as like a mm -hmm. stressful event? Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Usually what we would have, like clients that, you know, with a dog that has Addison's, like say if you know that they get upset about grooming, um, that it really just stresses them a lot, then you would increase the dose of the prednisone the day before, or the day of, and maybe the day after. And, okay. and that's what you would do. But if you, you know, it, otherwise... You know, you, we really shouldn't be on a dose that's that's high enough to cause any clinical signs at all, because it should just barely be enough. Just, I mean, it should meet what the normal body would produce. I understand. Okay. And all so, right, love it. and like I said, you know, the other thing we have a lot of clients who who really, and depending on the size of the dog, actually, the injectable product may be may be more <laughs> cost effective too, because the prednisone is very cheap, but the the mm -hmm. fludrocortisone is is typically. Um, uh, it's typically a good bit more as far as that goes. Uh, you know, about as far as cost. 15 pounds. He's a very small dog. Yeah, if he's mm -hmm. 15 pounds, you you really, I mean, you may, I mean, check with your family veterinarian and see, um, and the injectable product may be, may be more cost effective for you mm -hmm. as far as giving it. But then, 
you know, some people find that a hassle to do, you know, once a month instead of sometimes it's easier just to do something that you're doing daily anyway. So. Okay. All right. Well, that gives me a little bit more of an understanding. I, mean, I appreciate it. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, James. Thank you very much. Yep. Bye-bye.